Wireless transmission is a form of what is called unguided media. Using cabling is guided media. Wireless communication involves no physical link between two or more devices when communicating wirelessly. Wireless signals are spread through the air and are received and interpreted by appropriate antennas. When an antenna is attached to electrical circuit of a computer or wireless device, it converts the digital data into wireless signals and spreads that signal all over within its frequency range. The receptor on the other end receives these signals and converts them back to digital data. For your course, you will need to have an understanding of radio, satellite, microwave and cellular transmission methods. Before we start, let's get an understanding of how waves are measured. Waves are measured by their amplitude, which is the height of the wave, and by their frequency, which is the number of waves which pass by a specific point in a set amount of time. So, if the time it takes one wave to pass by a certain point in half a second, then two waves will have passed by this point in one second. Frequency is measured in hertz, that is the number of waves that pass by this point per second. So with our example, this wave frequency would be 2 hertz. Radio broadcasting is a one-way wireless transmission over radio waves intended to reach a wide audience between cities, regions and countries and short distances such as within an office or home. Radio waves can have a wavelength from 1 mm to 100,000 km and have frequency ranging from 3 Hz, extremely low frequency, to 300 GHz, extremely high frequency. Radio waves at low frequencies can travel through walls, whereas higher radio frequencies can travel in straight line and bounce back. The power of low frequency waves decreases sharply as they cover long distances. Higher frequency radio waves have more power, though are prone to be absorbed by rain and other obstacles. Examples of audio broadcasting can be local radio, television networks and satellite radio. Satellite communication is done by microwave, which is a very high frequency range, and is above 100 MHz. The satellite receives the signal from an Earth station, and amplifies the relatively weak signal, and then rebroadcasts it at a different frequency. There are two main advantages of satellite technology. Firstly, as you can see from the diagram, the curvature of the Earth is not a problem with the communication, as line of sight is not an issue. Satellite broadcasting is used over large geographic regions, as well as to remote regions. Satellites are kept in geostationary low Earth orbit, and are most commonly used for communication purposes. A second advantage is that the technology is largely unobtrusive, it has a minimal impact on the environment because of minimal infrastructure needed. The downside to satellite technology are the large upfront costs, the congestion of satellites already in orbit and the data costs for using this technology compared to other wireless technology. Microwaves operate at high frequencies between 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Microwave stations are placed one after the other up to 60 kilometers apart, but can be as close as just a few kilometers. This technology requires line of sight as the signals move in a straight line. Therefore, the curvature of the Earth is an issue. Also, because there are high frequency waves, they cannot penetrate wall-like obstacles. Microwave transmission depends highly upon weather conditions and the frequency it is using. 
A cellular network, also known as a mobile network, uses a network of mobile base stations. A cellular network uses radio technology that provides coverage for us to be able to use our mobile or cell phones for phone calls, text messages and data services such as the mobile internet. Each base station will radiate electromagnetic waves just like a local radio station or TV station. The areas each base station covers is divided into small hexagonal cells, each cell slightly overlapping each other. The size of the cells can vary from tens of kilometers to just a few kilometers depending on the amount of mobile usage there is in that area. Each base station is connected to a central switching centre. Switching centres track calls and transfer these calls from one base station to another as the person or car come to a cell boundary. All this is done whilst the call is in progress. The mobile station will search for a new channel to attach the mobile phone to in order not to drop the call. Once the new channel is found, the network will command the mobile unit to switch to the new channel and at the same time switch the call onto the new channel. The frequency of the signal in one cell or area is different from that in adjoining cells to avoid any interference of the signals transmitted. That concludes our talk on wireless transmission media. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.